Now, I noticed um, turning silver to gold is one of your catch cries. Um, have you been really successful in getting people to think bigger than second? Is that the philosophy? Yeah, it is. It is from, uh, the, the philosophy for me was that the level that I was performing at at Sydney Games was a silver level. And, and I use it in, in my story, but when I do speak to people, um, I say, you know, what level do you feel you're performing at now and are you happy with that level? And if it's a silver level and you're happy with it, then keep things going the way they are. If you're lucky enough to be at a bronze level, or even you might not even be at that level if you can relate it to, to a meta performance. Um, but if you're not happy with it, then what can you do to make a difference? And for me, when I won silver in Sydney, it was great to be on the dais. It's always great to, to not be in that fourth position, but I was really disappointed. So when I came back from Sydney, I took a really good look at what I was doing in my whole life to work out why didn't I get that gold medal. I had the potential, but it didn't come together. So I have a series of um, tips and a, and a process that I went through as an athlete to get back to a gold level, which uh, anyone can apply, whether they're in business, whether they're in year 12, uh, whether they're trying to set up a small business. They're just simple things that we all tend to do wrong or we all tend to get ourselves too busy and not do the right things that will really make the difference to the end result. A couple of examples? A uh, couple of examples. Uh. Well, for me, um, I think even just speaking to a lot of people is one thing that we don't do well is work out exactly what our commitments and our priorities are. So if you're doing business to know exactly what needs to be done and make sure you have the time to do those really important things. Uh, one of the things that I did before uh, leading into Athens, I wrote down every single commitment and every single role that I played and then I looked at the goal that I wanted to achieve. So I wanted to achieve gold in Athens. And I had to look at those list of commitments and priorities and I had to then look at them and say, well, which one is really important to getting gold? There's a lot on here that are great, but if I keep doing all of these things, I'm gonna be at a silver level. So I had to delete some of them, delegate some of them to other people, delay some things, because some things we do, if, we're, if I'm one of those people that loves to help people, so I tend to say yes, I used to say yes too much. Um, so I had to learn how to say no, which was a big difference. But you've got to do the really important things. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. They spend time doing things that don't really make a difference to the bottom line. Uh, so so there were a couple of key things that I think are always things that you need to do every week to make sure you stay on track. So apart from um, perhaps those examples, is there one standout life's lesson no, no, there is. And uh, for me, this one, it didn't happen overnight. It took quite a few years for me to, to learn this one. And I think it's a really powerful one because, as I said earlier, it took me eight, 18 years of my life, well, I suppose it was more the teenage years, where I knew that there was something wrong with me and I didn't like it. I could hide it, uh, so I did. And I had a million excuses to make sure people wouldn't find out that I had a little bit of a difference. And, uh, and then when I went, became a Paralympic athlete, it hit me head on because people knew that I was a Paralympic athlete and a successful one, but they would look at me and say, well, you're okay, what's wrong with you? So all of a sudden I was dealing with this thing that I didn't like about myself, but I had to address it. And slowly over the years, I got more comfortable in addressing it. And the more I spoke about it, the more I learned that this was a great to have a difference and great to be unique. And I learned how to turn it into a strength and not a weakness. And I'm really surprised when I do speak to groups of people, how often, nearly after every engagement, someone will come up to me and tell me something that they've been hiding for 50 years. And often people hide things because they're just worried about what other people will think, which is, you know, it's just not worth it. Mm. So, uh, so that's my big lesson is that I was lucky enough to overcome something that I now have this abundance of energy. I now, you know, 100% happy with who I am and you can just strive to be even better. So I really try and encourage people to, to do the same and, and not let themselves be held back by things that they could potentially be a strength for them. Katrina, just talking to you is just quite awesome actually. <laughs> What's the future for Katrina? The future, well I've, I've had a bit of a break from sport. Uh, I've got a two year old and in fact I've got one on the oh, way well hiding done. under this black dress here. So We didn't know this. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, June, mid-July, so uh, four months down the track. Awesome. Yeah, so at the moment I'm putting energy into into a young family, which is really important, uh, trying to maintain uh, my business and uh, and be a mother and a wife and uh, 
Uh, so it is busy, um, but it is a great time to, to be in. And you know, there's so many lessons learned from obviously being a parent, from, from being an athlete where you need to be very selfish to, to being a, a parent where you be selfless. It's, uh, it's definitely a good le a learning lesson. Bit of a transition. It is a, tra it is a transition. <laughs> it's a bit of a transition. Very big transition. And wait until you're, you're um, an empty nester like we are. And there's another transition <laughs> there, I can tell you. And just quickly, you're obviously moving home for the new family. Yeah, we are. Look, we, you know, Eddie and I, my husband, who in fact is an Olympic athlete as well, we met at the Institute of Sport in Canberra and uh, he's still, he retired and he's coaching now water polo in South Australia and we bought a property, our first property in 2001, which is the one we're selling, uh, with intention of holding for a couple of years and then and selling. But uh, we can't believe that it's been eight, nine, nearly nine years and just because Time of our... Time flies, Yeah, it? and we travel a lot and we've been, it's just taken us a lot longer. So we've absolutely loved where we're at. We're just ready for a new challenge. We're ready to uh, to grow, obviously, and, and, and get into another area and uh, maybe do a bit more renovating and even move on after that. So well, we've definitely found something we're passionate about doing. That's fantastic. And Katrina, for those perhaps business people that may be watching today, where would they contact you? Because I, I know that you're on the speaker circuit, so uh, where would they contact you? Yeah, look, the best place to contact me is uh, my website, which is katrinaweb.com.au, and all my details are on there, and uh, people can get in contact me, shoot me an email, or send, uh, ring me from there. So katrinaweb.com.au. Katrina, it's been absolutely incredible having you on board. Thank you for coming on to Toop TV. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony.